So the first thing I discovered is that among the set of lies we're told about what it means to be American, the number one core message that we're not generally taught is that freedom is given to us, is expected to be, the founders expected us to experience freedom not as a state of quiescence, but as a challenge, as an ongoing challenge. And what I mean is this. Who here is familiar with the phrase life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness from the Declaration of Independence, show of hands? Everybody. Um, this is what we're taught in school. And we're sort of given the interpretation that this means, you know, everyone can get along doing their own thing. I won't bother you, you don't bother me. You know, you can be a goth and I'll be a soccer mom and we'll just all shop together at the mall. <laughs> But we're not taught in middle school this, the famous second paragraph, well, no longer famous second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, which says that it is our duty to overthrow the government if the government suppresses the freedoms of the people. Duty to overthrow the government. Who was taught that in middle school? I wasn't either. Um, but that's, it's right there in black and white. And I discovered that the great Americans were not the ones saying victory accomplished, mission accomplished, right? Or propagating this idea that a patriot is someone who supports military intervention at all costs, or who supports the government's decision at all costs. It turns out that the founders believed that a patriot is someone who challenges the government every time is, does not reflect the will of the people. And it turns out that the great Americans were not flattering the American people. They were the ones who were willing to hold a mirror up to the American people when the American people went astray from their ideals. So you get unbelievable things that nobody teaches our children, like the second inaugural address of Abraham Lincoln, where he, sa he didn't say mission accomplished. It was the middle of a bloody civil war. He said, it's the middle of a bloody civil war. And then he said, I couldn't believe this when I read it. I, w I had to like, I had to take a breath. It was so stunning. He said, there's suffering, there's, there's dying. And he said, not one iota of suffering will abate or one drop of blood or, or piece of treasure will, will be saved until we have expiated the wrong we've done by enslaving our fellow Americans for hundreds of years. He said that to the American people. He was assassinated shortly thereafter, but he said it. Martin Luther King. You know, we're taught that he said, I have a dream. Well, we're not taught, you know, the whole furor about Barack Obama's pastor who held, you know, insisted that we hold a mirror up to ourselves. Martin Luther King did the same thing. He said about the Vietnam War that it would come back to us, that our karma would come back to us if we did not do justly. And the most amazing thing I discovered was that even from the very inception of the first beginning of the idea of America before America was a nation. It turns out that it wasn't a state of luck or fortune that, you know, we're told, oh, you're American, you know, we just got luckier than everyone else, we're better than everyone else. To the contrary, the very first great Americans presented to their fellow citizens the idea that America was a process of justice. So Ronald Reagan often quoted John Winthrop, the Puritan minister, and said that Winthrop said, we are a city on a hill, a shining light to the nations, right? It's been used again and again in speeches to justify uh, whatever we want to do to the rest of the world. But Winthrop didn't say that. He said, we shall be as a city on a hill, which in 17th century language means we must be. We are charged with doing justly, acting righteously. And then you're never told this in any presidential speech. 
The rest of the paragraph says, and if we do not do justly, our enemies will mock us and God will condemn us and we will deserve it. That was the core American ideal that the great Americans understood, that America is a process of justice. 